This is Hard Parking, sponsored by Wright Honda and Wright Toyota out of Scottsdale, Arizona. I'm your host, Jay Finney, recording from my studio in Gilbert, Arizona. Almost forgot where I live there. If this is your first time listening to the show, welcome to the show. If this is your first time watching the show, this is the first time I've actually recorded the opening instead of just a segment for YouTube. So it's new for both of us. Coming up on today's show, this is part two of a series that I've done or that I've started doing called Mental Health Check checking in with your friends. You know, this is the non-automotive automotive podcast, which means we talk about cars, but we talk about life. Behind the wheel of every car is a driver that's going through the same things that a lot of other people are going through. Bob Marshall is my guest today. Bob Chat is another podcast. Good friend of mine from up in Canada. And about six or seven months ago, his life got turned upside down. What happened to him happens to a lot more men and women than you would think that you see every day. Also, I saw my first new Mustang. Actually, I've probably seen hundreds of them, but for whatever reason, I was driving on the freeway and I noticed, I looked over and there was a silver one. I go, oh wait, that's that newer redesigned Mustang. And it's an interesting looking car, super slick. It was pretty muted, so it obviously wasn't like a 5.0 or whatever they're doing these days. Then after I saw that one over the next 48 hours, I saw probably 30 of them. So I guess I wasn't paying attention. Last week when I was going to pick up the wheels for my Honda Z, about two and a half hours away, I saw a Dodge Hornet. And I don't think I've ever seen one of those on the road. I don't quite understand why they even exist. Uh, the taillights were kind of cool. The emblem of the Hornet was super cool. But that's about it. So it's a confusing looking vehicle. It's almost like a, as if a Dodge Dart decided it wanted to be a entry level crossover SUV. It grew into a Hornet, maybe. I don't know. When I think of hornets, I think of things that are scary and they sting the hell out of you and they keep stinging you and you don't want any part of that. But when you see the vehicle, not very scary. Also, the other day, my wife and I went out to lunch and as I'm pulling into my very tiny 1998 Honda Z right-hand drive, micro K class midship SUV, saw my first cyber truck in the wild. I pointed out to my wife, I go, look, honey, there's a cyber truck. She looked at it and she says, wow, that thing is ugly. So we got out of the car, kind of looked at it. And I don't know if I would say the cyber truck is ugly. I would just say it's very different. It's big. It's like suburban big. It took up the entire parking lot from the curb all the way to the back of the line. And so I got up on it, kind of looked at it. Very interesting vehicle. You know, Matt D'Andrea on CarCast, which is a very popular, insanely popular podcast, way more popular than this one's ever going to be, stated of the, of the dashboard, it's so big you could put three large pizzas on it. And he's right. That thing was huge. But what do you guys think of the Cybertruck? I haven't really heard anything overly positive on it, but it's not a car that I really, I'm really very interested in anyway. And I don't mind seeing them on the road just because they're so different and weird. But I, if you said they were ugly, I wouldn't argue with you that they're not. I just personally think they're not ugly, but they're just different. The Infiniti QX80 has finally been revealed. As you guys know, I have a 2009 5.0 liter V8 Infiniti FX50S. This QX80 is pretty nice. We always call those big ones the beluga whales because they just look like a beluga whale. Not in the market for one, but if you get it all optioned out, you could be looking at a hundred grand, which is a significant step up from their current lineup. I don't think it's ugly. A lot of the other Infinity guys think it's ugly, but too many people are kind of living in yesteryear. There's nothing wrong with the vehicle. I think it's kind of nice. And finally, Hyundai has released its Ionic 5N version. And so there's a lot of stir in California because one dealership had it marked up $25,000 over sticker, which brought it up to, I don't know, $86,000. I'm a big fan of the Ionic 5. I think it's really cool. I wouldn't mind buying a used one for $20,000, $25,000. Not to say I'm in the market for one right now, but the thought of the Ionic 5N is pretty cool. Would I pay $80,000 for it? I would not. But let's stop acting like a $25,000 markup is big. In today's market, everything is marked up. 
Porsche guys are paying eighty, hundred thousand dollars over, and I know I'm not. I'm not saying the Ionic Five is a Porsche. I'm just saying markups are pretty standard, and if you search long and hard enough, you can find a vehicle for MSRP or just a couple thousand dollars over. You guys know my 2022 Acura NSX Type S. I paid zero over, but I have friends that paid as much as seventy thousand over. So the deals are out there. Coming up after this break from Four Wheel Online. Bob Marshall. For over a decade, Four Wheel Online has been bringing the best truck accessories and truck parts to enhance the appearance and performance of all trucks and SUVs. They are dedicated to providing an extensive range of upgrades that will match any maker model on the road. The truck products cover everything to give your truck a custom look and added functionality. Need a wheel and tire package? Head over and use the configuration tool. They carry all the major brands of wheels and tires, so go get outfitted today. Visit them online at Four Wheel Online. I'm here with Mr. Bob Marshall. Actually, I'm not here because you are still in Canada and you haven't gone anywhere, but welcome back to Hard Parking. It's been a while. The last time you were on, we were doing movies. You had some things going on in your life. We're going to touch on that in a little bit. You've also recently bought a car because I heard that on your podcast, a Hyundai. So we're going to talk about that a little <laughs> bit as well. And then if you want, we can even talk about your podcast and how you and your guest are constantly clipping in the audio and it makes it hard for me to listen to. So Bob, <laughs> chat. Welcome back, man. What is happening, Jay? Good to be back. I, uh, I'm i going to take that as you saying I miss you, and I miss you as well. So thank you. Indeed. Quite the intro. Yeah. And I, pre I appreciate you saying uh, Hyundai correctly as well. No, I think you said Hyundai Yay or something last time. Hyundai. <laughs> Hyundai. Yeah. It was a point of contention for sure. But, uh, yeah, no, I did. I got, I got a lot going on, so... You know, just uh, living that crazy Canadian life. It's actually a holiday here today. Yep, so we're recording this on Good Friday. Mm. And we had some... It's been a pretty good day. Yeah, we've had some discussion on that earlier before. Neither one of us want to get canceled. And so, you know, kind of joking around with that a little bit. Uh, it is a Good Friday. Um, so what's new in your world? Well, actually, I don't know, that's such an open-ended question. Yes, but you know, any any day that I don't have to go to work is a good day. And actually, I uh, I just had my ten year anniversary at my job on Tuesday. Ten years, isn't that crazy? Congratulations! Is that when you went yeah. to the local uh, liquor store and ran into six or seven of your other coworkers? Yes, they. Uh, uh, you would. It would. Well, I work at a pipe factory for people that don't know. If you haven't listened before, and uh, yeah. It's, I don't know what it is about a pipe factory. It drives people to drink. So <laughs> they're usually there. Did you say pipe but, uh, factory? I work at a pipe factory, yes. Yeah, so uh, you know Big O? You know what Big O is? Big O's tires? Like drainage pipe. Oh. No, like, like you know, if you have, like, and I'm going to say eaves trough. I know you call them gutters. But if you have, like, a piece of pipe off the end of that, the, the, like the downspout, and it, pull, like, runs water away from the side of your house. You know that pipe? Mm -hmm. That's what we make, pretty much. And there, believe it or not, there's a lot of sexual innuendos that can be made about working on a pipe factory. I remember uh, when I first started there, I started on midnights, and all my friends said, Bob, you work in the midnight shift at the pipe factory? <laughs> I said, yeah. <laughs> a man's got to eat, Jay. Uh, how often is laying pipe thrown around? Oh, oh. All the time. You know David Wilk do you know David Wilcox? Do you know who that is? I don't think so. Okay. I'm gonna send you a song. David Wilcox is a Canadian uh and I'm not surprised that you don't know him because like we have a lot of great musicians, but people don't really know them. And he literally has a, a song called Lang Pipe. He's kinda like like he's like late eighties, early nineties, like rock and roll. He's got okay. a ton of great songs. I'll send you some, but he has a song called Lang Pipe. And it's kind of like the anthem of our factory. Got it. And he okay. actually played a concert. They actually played a concert there years ago. <clears throat> so I actually saw him recently. He's like 75 and blind. But if, I'll be goddamned if he can't make that guitar talk. I thought you were going to say, but he could still lay that pipe. So, Oh, he's oh he's laying pipe, baby. He is laying pipe, my man. So is there a chance yeah, no, I've sure. heard the song, though? Because I may have heard the song. Like, you said, hey, do you know this musician? I'm not good with musicians. Uh, I mean, who doesn't know who Tom Petty is? Who doesn't know who Aerosmith is? Brian Adams or whatever. Isn't Brian Adams Canadian? Or is that Richard Brian Marks? Brian Adams is Canadian. So 
sorry. So it is Brian Adams. I didn't know if it was Brian Adams or Richard Marks, but like I know those names. Obviously, I'm yeah, was yeah. raised in the '80s and '90s. Uh, but just you know, Wilcox, David Wilcox, I wouldn't know the name, but I might know the music. So, oh Jay, you would love David Wilcox. He's got some. He's got some great fucking songs. Okay, and what oh, about? Are we, swear on hard, are we allowed to swear on hard parking? You already know it because you're a return offender. Um, <laughs> what's yeah, worse? Hold on, I'll put a I'll put a loony in the swear jar for you. Yes, yes, swear jar. I need one of those around here. If I had a staff or people that actually sit in the room with me when I record, which I've been begging for for years, I'd ha- I totally have a swear jar in here and multiple camera angles too, so everybody can kind of get in on the action. Um, so we're one of my dream, one of my dreams. One of my dreams is to come to Arizona and do an in person in your studio with you. Weird. It's one of my dreams too. Yet here we are. Um, <laughs> here we are, fourteen hundred miles away from each other. This is bullshit. <laughs> probably further away than that. Let me ask you yeah, this: What's know. worse, though? You work at a pipe kilometers. factory, and it's better than working at a fudge factory. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's. Uh, yeah, I don't have to pack anything, so that works out really well. Actually, I actually have an office job now, so it's uh, – I basically sit at the computer all day. And, uh, you know, Microsoft Excel is my best friend, you know, so. So you got – Not really. I think within the last Sorry? 18 months, right, you received a raise and kind of got shuffled into the office? Yeah, it'll be uh, two years in July I've had this job now. So it's uh, it's going pretty good. It's uh, It's a lot of work. But it's a little bit more money, which is nice. And I have a lot of freedom in my position now, which is great. Like, you know, if I need to, if I want to slip out for an hour, I'll just slip out. You know, my boss basically says, I don't care when you show up, when you're done, as long as your work is finished. So it's, uh, it's, it's pretty nice, actually. And what do you do? What do I do? Is it a low stress job? Uh, so it sounds I'm, like you're having a blast doing it. Well, it's just a lot of math and it's very like, repetitive and, te- and tedious. Um, but I'm basically a raw material coordinator is my official title. Mm-hmm. Um, so in layman's terms, I'm a glorified auditor, basically. So I basically, I manage like all the inventory for the factory, do all the ordering and receiving, that kind of stuff. So, And uh, we are owned by an American company, so I get to speak to a lot of Americans all the time, not as friendly as you are. So, you know, this has been, this is really nice. <laughs> there are a few Americans as friendly as I am. You are one of a kind. You can Mr. put that Dave in your Fanning. pipe and smoke it. Oh, I plan on it. We're smoking all kinds of stuff up here. Sure and you I are. Mean weed. I meant weed. I meant weed. I meant weed. <laughs> How's the weed in Canada? Oh, it's crazy. Well, it's legal, right? Like there. Well, yeah, the, you have a shop at every corner, if I recall correctly, when I was in Hamilton. I know you're not in Hamilton, oh, but you're close. You. We're in London, yeah. So we're only about an hour and ten minutes from Hamilton, but it's basically like you know you talk about Canada. How there's Tim Hortons on every corner. There's there's basically a weed store on every corner. Like I there's probably in a like I'm and I'm going to say kilometers because I'm from Canada, but like in a ten kilometer radius of my house, which is I don't know like three miles, three and a half miles. There's probably twenty stores that I could buy weed at. Like it's crazy. So you're the math guy because I don't know. I think ten kilometers might be like eight and a half miles, but I don't know. Well, I'm, no, I'm pretty sure there's like a five k oh, is like two right. and a half miles, right? Or three miles, three point two okay. miles on a five k. I am the math guy. Every time I play a game with people, I say I'm the math guy. Let me do the score. But yeah, you're right. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe so. Who knows? I was listening to your podcast recently. You took a you took a big break. So do you want to talk about your podcast? You want to talk about your break? I want to talk about your break. My break? Okay, we can talk about the break. Like when I was not work? Um, the, the long break between your podcast episodes because you had some stuff go on in your life. Um, I had a lot. Yeah, I had a lot going on. I'm getting divorced, which is uh, super exciting. So, <laughs> And that started – like, like what, what, what happened? Like I think – I want to say you came home and she wasn't there or what, what happened? Yeah, pretty much. I just went to work one day and yeah, I came home and she was gone. Took the kids, took all their shit. And uh and this is a while ago, right? So I mean it's this been is, a while. It's been I don't know. It's been like eight months, maybe, maybe a little bit longer. But um but yeah, no, I mean it's you know, I'm moving on with my life and I'm, you know, paying a lawyer a lot of money, which is, is always a great time. But uh no, it's good, man. I got a 
I was seeing a girl for a while and, you know, it didn't really work out. She was just, I couldn't really give her what she wanted, but then I met another girl and uh, things are going really well with her. And, you know, I got my dog still, you know, if she took my dog, I would have totally lost it. But yeah, no, I mean, it's, it is what it is. I'm just, you know, handling my, sh- doing what I got to do, going to work every day, paying the lawyer, trying to get more time with my kids, you know, just trying to live my best life and move on as best as possible. Pretty much. It's, uh, it's stressful, but you know, what, what do you do? I mean, you're right. It's a part of life. It's a, it's a shitty part of life. Fortunately, I haven't had to experience that, but I've had really good friends like yourself that have had to experience that. And it's just, it's baffling to me. I think there's a breaking point yeah. in everyone's life, whether it's the girl packing up and leaving or the guy packing up and leaving. And I just, you know, it's really, you know, how do you get to that point? I mean, were there signs? You know, I have another buddy here. It's the same deal. He came home and, I mean, at least you have a life with your kids. I don't think he's seen his daughters in a couple of years. Yeah, I, mean, I don't know. I don't know how you. Mean. Yeah, I don't know how you justify that part of it. But well, how about for you? No, and that's and that. Yeah, and that's 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 and unfortunately, like the dad always kind of gets a short end of the stick in this situation. But I mean, at the end of the day, though, it's like you know, I, I don't understand why they don't want to make it as easy for the dad as possible when he's trying to see his kids when there's all these deadbeats out there that don't even care about their kids you know like you know if i didn't care about the kids and i wouldn't be spending all this money and trying to get as much time with them as possible like it's you know it's it is what it is but moving on and moving up buddy trying to live my life and you know and maybe just sometimes people aren't meant to be together you know it's it's just the reality of things yeah i mean there's there's a lot of deadbeat moms out there too uh, people unfortunately people are like inherently shitty and and the and the worst part about any kind of any kind of situation that involves like or pertains to this is the kids are always the ones that get hurt man and you know it's like you know parents don't like each other they're vindictive and resentful and it's always the kids that are the ones that are going to suffer which is the shitty part but you know my kids are pretty young so like they're not they're not going to remember us being together probably you know but i just want to i want to be as present as possible and you know, try to try to give them the best life that I can possibly do when I have the time with them. They're three. Yeah, they're going to be three in June. So identical boys. Those are twins. They're twins. Yeah, I need a little credit for my memory here. I was gonna say you. You know what? You, you even though you are you're getting to be an old man, you uh, <laughs> you're so pretty sharp. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Mister Marshall, Mister Bob Chat, Bob Chat Podcast. Yeah, you're welcome. Well, I mean, I can stop trying yeah. to dig that knife, and I was just curious if you know, was there were there any signs? Is it just where you guys did? You, uh, no, I mean, I mean, you always kinda, seem happy I when I talk I mean, to you, you know, and you guys are just, yeah. I'm like, I mean, her and, biggest, her biggest thing, her biggest thing was that, um, she's saying I work too much. Right. But I mean, at the same time, like she's a stay at home mom with two kids. Like I, you know, I'm paying for everything. You know, I'm like paying a car loan. I'm paying the rent, I'm buying the groceries. And it's like, if I didn't work so much, then like we wouldn't have been able to sustain our household. Right. And I think she already kind of suffered from depression a little bit. Probably. Well, I know she did. And then I think just the postpartum and then being stuck in the house with the kids all day. I mean, that's enough to make anybody go crazy. And, you know, and who knows if she, oh, you get to go to work every day. Well, it's like, you know, I, I'm, I'm not enjoying myself. You know, I'm just, I'm trying to provide for my family the best I can. Yeah. And, did, I, and I had always said, go ahead. I know, I'd always said to her too, I was like, this is going to be the toughest time of our life. You know, like I'm working a lot, you're here with the kids. Once they get to be school age, you know, then it's going to take that kind of weight off your shoulders. You can go back into the workforce. Like we can kind of get back on track with our lives like we were before and build that routine again. Right. But, you know, it's just sometimes, like I said, you're just not meant to be with people. So what do you do? You know? And daycare is very expensive, I would imagine. Or was that not an option? Uh, yeah. Well, when you got two kids at once and it's even yeah. trying to like find two spots. I mean, I, you know, Canada, Canada's population grew a million people in the last year. Um, you know, so it's, it's, uh, we have a housing crisis. We have like problems for having, like we have daycare crisis. Like there's, there's just no, there's not enough places and for people to, to go. That's the problem. There's too many people and not enough resources. Yeah. So that's a, that's a tough situation, man. Cause it's, you're doing everything you can to provide 
And I mean, it's enough. It may not have been enough for her, Bob, but it's definitely enough. And I think anyone listening to this would understand that, you know, it's a tough situation. It's hard. Yeah. And I appreciate that. I mean, you know, I always, and even everyone that I know, like my family, my friends and like, you know, not to say that they're biased or anything, but like I think everybody was fully aware. Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> I think everyone was fully aware that I was doing what I thought was what I needed to do. Right. Yeah. Like I, I never missed a day of work. You know what I mean? Like I would come home, I would, I'm here when I can be, you know, it's not like I'm out drinking or going and partying with my friends all the time, you know, but it's just, you know, she, you get to feel, I'm sure like you're a single parent if you're here with the kids all day, but you know, and somebody has to go to work. Unfortunately, that's, you know, that's how the world works. If you were a bad guy, I would tell you so. I know you would, and I don't think I'm a bad guy. But no, it's things are getting better, man. Like I said, I got a nice lady in my life now, and you know, I think obviously I miss my kids and got a lot of stuff going on. But I'm trying not to let that, you know, deter me from still trying to enjoy the little bit of free time that I do have. How often do you get to see him? Uh, Right now, it's like every other weekend, which is not enough. Yeah. And then, and then like, I, I, like I FaceTime them during the week and stuff, but that's if she answers. Right. So it's, it's just, it's a lot of stuff going on and, uh, you know, you kind of just have, you're kind of at the, at the will of the legal, the legal, legal system. And you kind of let, let that play itself out and, you know, just go from there and see what happens. So, you know, I'm old, right? I know you're old. Yeah. So having grandkids, (laughs) you know, I have a five-year-old grandkid and watching him grow exactly you got it and watching him grow and they're here all the time as you know everybody knows that but yeah you know his dad isn't around he tried you know that whole story it's documented in my old podcast episodes stuff like that but uh he just i don't know what his excuse is now he just doesn't come around and it's and it you know he saw him a lot well he saw him a couple times actually not a lot from the age of like three to four. Obviously, yeah. because of other situations, he didn't see him at all for a while because he was just wasn't in the country. He was out of the country. Uh, but I say all that to say that, you know, you're going through what you're going through right now and you'll get it sorted way before the kids are going to care that much. Uh, so, well, and that's the thing, right? Yeah. By the time they're four or five years old, it'll be a, it's going to be a much bigger deal to see daddy as often as you can, other than, you know, when they're three, where it's kind of cool, but it's proven that kids' memories, thats they suck. That's why you can't remember anything when you're two or three years old. Your memories don't start till like four yeah. or five. Your brain is incapable of storing memories for more than like a week when you're little. Mm-hmm. So yeah. as long as they're getting the care, regardless of where it's coming from, by the time they get fully, fully, super fully aware of everything, so much that they're going to get on your last nerve, you know, you're going to be through all this, <laughs> all this crap and on to, you know, the, the future. Yeah, exactly. No, I, pre- I appreciate you. I uh, appreciate you worrying about me and checking in on that. That's nice because it's uh it is a shitty situation, but you know, just got to keep, uh, keep on keeping on, man. Keep trucking. All right. Uh, Joe <laughs> dirt, right. You got to keep on keeping on. <laughs> hey, live cigar and you got to dig it, brother. <laughs> <laughs> um, Tell me about your Hyundai, man. Last yeah, time I was with you uh, a, a few years ago, a couple of years, almost two years ago, almost. Um, we were rolling around and your car fell apart, literally. So you got something new that's hopefully not falling apart. Tell me about it. Tell us about it. This is a well. In all, fa- in all fairness, in all fairness to the uh, the part falling off the car it was just part of a heat shield. So I just want everyone to be aware it wasn't like it was a total piece of crap. Sure, but. Uh, yeah, sure. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I got a 2011 uh, Accent now, which is nice. It's a standard car, actually. I think you'd be proud of me, Jay. I uh, I never had a standard car. I've never drove a standard car in my, ever in my life. And uh, it was just the price was right. Um, honestly, dude, getting rear-ended. Like, I got rear-ended at a red light. Mm. And that was probably one of the best things that ever happened to me. Because I got the insurance money, uh, only about half the insurance money I took to get this car. And then the rest of it, I was able to like, pay off some bills get my, get my affairs in order. And then, you know, kind of have like a fresh start financially, which was really nice That's good because, uh, you know, having my, after my wife left, I was owed a little bit of money just, you know, based on our situation and what was going on. So, but, uh, it's nice, man. And now I'm driving, I feel like a race car driver to shift it all over town. 
Well, thank God you didn't spend it all on that 2011 uh, Hyundai. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's interesting when I, <laughs> when I listened to your episode and you said standard, standard, standard. And it's a, it's a weird language thing because, you know, here we call them manual transmissions because you have to manually shift a gear. But I also yeah, do yeah, know yeah. they're called standards. And so I was just, I'm, I mean, I could look it up. I could look anything up on Google, right? But when you said that on yep. the podcast, I was like, huh. I guess he's right. They are called standards. And it depends on where you're at. Yes. Yeah. Save the manuals. We have those shirts here. Save the manuals. Yeah. Well, and it's it's strange. It's all it always baffles me too, like how and I mean obviously we're very Americanized here. Like, you know what I mean? Like we, we watch all your T V, like you know, like Canada is basically just like another state of America, except we have our own like culture and everything. Right. But it's mm-hmm. every once in a while when we talk like certain words and stuff like that, or refer or phrases, that, that's what comes through. Right. You know, like if we're, if I was, if people were listening to this podcast and they didn't know I was Canadian, they probably wouldn't even think I was, you know, cause I'm not talking like this. Hey, eh? you know what I mean? Well, you're damn near close. But, uh, yeah, I do say hey, a lot. I don't even mean to. Hey, it's, it's Let me ask you this. How, how many times a day, how many times a day you say y'all? Um, less than once, but I do use it. And not every American <laughs> uses that word, yes, okay. but it's baked into me because I'm from Texas. And you know what I say? I always go, I always go, Hey, you guys. <laughs> Is that from Hee Haw? <laughs> no, it's from the Goonies. <laughs> oh, uh, this is from the electric company too. Like I used to watch PBS when I was a kid and that's, that was one of it too. So I bet you that's, yeah. I bet you the one in Goonies is from PBS because it's around that time frame. Yeah. Like early, like late seventies, early eighties, yeah, early eighties. Yeah. Super early eighties. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I bet you that's what that's from. So you're a fellow movie buff like myself and I, Yes. I plan to load up those movies and add them to my, my reaction channel that nobody watches. I think I'm in a, uh, I'm in some sort of a weird YouTube, I wouldn't say shadow ban, but I have some, <laughs> I have some really good YouTube friends that are also content creators that do the same thing as I do. And they can't figure out for the life, why the hell I'm not getting the views, the subs that I need to, because the content is really good and I'm posting on a regular basis every week for about yeah, it's, three it's like they they months. like see, they've like secretly removed you from the algorithm or something yeah it's, it's so something weird. and it's it's very frustrating um so maybe you and i could do one of these virtually via zoom or something it mm-hmm. can be done and yes you know, it can who knows that'd be a lot of fun um tell me about tell we us have the- Go we ahead. have the technology. We have the technology. We have the technology. <laughs> yeah, you can use your, I don't even know what recording device you would use. But I'll figure it out. Yeah, you'll figure it out. You got to turn the gain down on your microphones, by the way. <laughs> okay. You guys, I know, I'm sorry. You're you're very upset about that, eh? I am, because I listen, huh? um, but it's like... You got to you got to talk me through what you guys are doing over there because I think if you, what microphones are you using? Same ones that you had before, uh, I, right? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, and then like I just plug them into the Zoom that I have, and then like I usually set the Zoom at like five, but then my biggest problem is that when I'm editing, I feel like if I don't turn the gain up on like the vault, like the the vocal tracks, then it doesn't come through like speakers it's as too quiet. loud as it should be. What it's are you? Quiet, yeah. What are you using to edit? Because that's right, you have a Zoom, which is good. So what do you have? A Zoom H five or something, um, or H four or H six? I have I have the H five. Yeah, it's just got the two ports on it. But I I use Audacity because it's free. I'll look into that. Do you have to look into a way to set your peak on Audacity? If you could set your peak to negative three to not exceed normalize, not exceed negative three, I think that's going to do you a world of wonders. Now, can you still increase the volume of said track? Uh, yeah, because one just... thing has nothing to do with the other as, as much. Okay, we, we think okay. it. We think it does, but it's not exactly a, a one-to-one type of deal. I use a okay, I use well, the term listen, Venn we... diagram a lot when I talk lately, and it's they're part of the same Venn diagram. So there's definitely some overlapping there. Yeah, yeah. There's uh, you got to get that Goldilocks, that sweet spot, right? Yes. 
Exactly. Well, well, uh, as I like to say when we're having our meet, daily management meeting at the Pipe Factory every day, we'll take this offline. Because yes, we'll take I'm this offline. On a, I'm sitting on a, a juicy episode I want to edit soon. So, yeah, I would definitely appreciate the uh, the knowledge because you are a master of your craft, sir. So, I got a lot of room to improve, but I'll tell you what. Because you're such a good guy, and I know you've gone through a lot of things, <laughs> and I'm very sympathetic to your situation for you, I'll normalize that for about a hundred bucks per person. So if you have two guys, that's two hundred dollars. I got you. Yeah, is that USD or what? <laughs> I'll take care of that. That's gonna be like that's gonna run me almost like three hundred, bro. Yeah, whatever the wherever the exchange rate is in my favor, that's the one that we're gonna tag you with. Uh yeah, it two hundred dollars two hundred USD would probably cost me like I think it's, I think right now it's like 71 cents on the dollar. So it would cost me, yeah, probably over 250 bucks. I think we can work Our that dollar's out. garbage. You got any plans for Easter? <laughs> this is going to come out uh, uh, Easter Monday. We were talking about that earlier. How we Americans don't get Fridays and Mondays off around a holiday. We only, we At only least get not the Easter, Friday off. Which I is book, weird. I booked the Monday off because I wanted to have myself a four day weekend. So today is the only real day we get off work. Like everything's closed. Grocery stores are closed. Banks are closed. Beer stores are closed. Everything's closed. So food, beer, and food, beer, and money. Can't get it. Yeah, we, I, I think but. we just nationally don't recognize Easter as a main holiday because it's a religious holiday. I think that's what it is. Because if it were July 4th on a Saturday or a Sunday or Christmas on a Saturday or a Sunday, we would get the leading Friday or the following Monday off depending on where you worked and how it was recognized. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And we, and we do that in certain instances as well too, right? Like, like we have Canada day, which is July 1st and same deal. If it falls on a Saturday, they'll still give you that extra day off. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. So no, it's, uh, not a whole lot. Uh, I, we are, me and my girlfriend and, uh, boys, godparents, good friends of mine. We're going to go to a place called St. Jacob's market tomorrow. It's about an hour away from here. They kind of have like an outdoor farmer's market. They have like an antique mall. So, you know, go get some coffee, go for a little road trip, you know, walk around there for a little bit, do some shopping, you know, just make it, have a nice little Saturday. And then, uh, then that night we're going to plan on doing a game night and actually have half a brisket. I'm going to be mm. smoking for my family to enjoy on uh, Sunday dinner. Bob, so, how old are you? I'm 31. Okay, I better never hear you mention anything about some stupid fucking antique anything until you get retirement age. The rest of that was really good. <laughs> Have a great time at the farmer's market, 31-year-old, and make sure you pick up some antiques. Well, they have a lot of cool stuff. Like, you, you got to walk around. You can't just walk. You know, you might find some treasures, whatever. Sure. It's like it's like it's like thrifting. It's cool, man. You know? It's like swap meets, right? I mean, we call them swap yeah, meets. It's kind of the same deal, you know, a bunch of knockoff shit. Uh, but the but the real antique shows and the real flea markets are just random shit that people either personally make or they've collected that you can trade with somebody. So I feel you. Yeah, yeah. I'm an old soul, Jay. <laughs> Things are different in Canada. I tell you. Yeah, yeah. Wait, I haven't had milk out of a carton in years. <laughs> yep they got them in bags if you guys want to, want to catch that one so bob marshall uh bob chat is his podcast it's a really good podcast even with the audio clipping uh, you won't be disappointed it's always him and and whoever his buddy is having a great time i think the one that i listened mm -hmm. to recently uh i forgot the guy's name but um he it's the it's, he's the guy who you that you do the dad pod episodes with the dad chat, yeah. So that's Matt. He is yeah. the co-host of the show. Yep. He is the uh, the peanut butter to my jelly. Cool. Yep. That was a that was a fun episode. To yeah, to. I'm glad you liked it. Yeah. Me and him always have a great time, and it's and that's kind of how Bob Chat was started. We worked together. We worked together for like three months, and uh, he got a better job and left. But we just we just always had this banter, and he always picked up these ridiculous out of context movie quotes that I would I would spit out of my mouth because I have no filter. And uh, and I said, hey, you know, do you want to start a podcast? Like we're funny as hell. Let's record it. Yeah, and that, uh, that was the birth of Bob Chat. That whole situation. Uh, but he, he had the, the day from hell when they went on vacation. That was, whew. yeah, right. Yeah. He's always finding, he somehow always gets himself into like a crazy situation. 
It's like, can I just enjoy a vacation for once? <laughs> well, it sounded like he enjoyed the rest of the vacation after that first day got out of the way. So, yeah. Well, it's pretty easy to enjoy yourself when you're on all inclusive and the and the drinks don't stop flowing. So, for sure, I, mean, I could if I'm drinking 20 beers a day or 20 margaritas deep on a beach somewhere. I don't care what's going on. <laughs> I think if I drank 20 beers a day or 20 margaritas, I'd be dead. So, but yeah, yep. With that being said, I man, gotta pace yourself. I know you got to pace yourself, uh, Mr. Bob Marshall. Thank you for taking the time to catch up with yeah, me, absolutely. and we'll have to connect offline. Yes, I uh, I need your I need you to your guidance and your wisdom as far as the uh, audio, audio editing goes. So you're a good man, Jay, and I appreciate the hell out of you. Talk to you later. All right, brother. Thank you. Bye, guys. I want to thank Mr. Bob Marshall, Bob Chat, for joining. It takes a lot, I think, for someone to come out and talk about some of those things that's happened, and I can't imagine that. You know, it's his life. I mean, I'm glad he's happy now and he's kind of found peace with the situation. And he's a little younger. And unfortunately, what happened to him has happened to a lot of people, whether you're male or female. Yes, I think that society leans heavily towards penalizing the male when that happens. Even if you're a perfectly good father, you still get screwed in the end. Sure, there's a, just like we said, there's a ton of deadbeat dads, there's a lot of deadbeat moms too. Also, Ramsey came into town, Mr. Ramsey Vincent of Automotive Specialty Tool, and we went out to B&B Cocktail Lounge in Scottsdale. He had a couple of Manhattans, and I had some tequila, some Fortaleza uh, on the rocks for me. But they brought us, so we we sat at the bar, and there was, we're probably, there's probably 10 customers in. It's around 5 o'clock on the weekend on Saturday. Not really a busy time. Five o'clock on a Monday through Friday would be a lot busier, obviously, because it's happy hour. I'm sure it got busy within the next two hours, but, you know, the bar staff was cool. We're sitting there drinking, and the bar staff started handing out bacon. So instead of bar food like peanuts, and I don't know, I don't remember the last time I was at a bar that served peanuts, but you guys know what I'm talking about. They brought us bacon. So we ate the three pieces of bacon, and 10 minutes later, they brought us more bacon, and I'll be honest with you guys, I was kind of looking around at the other bacons that weren't being eaten and thought about, excuse me, are you going to eat that? I didn't, but I thought about it. That conversation, like all conversations with Bob Marshall, was brought to you by Cell Shop Wireless Services, your number one retailer, AT&T dealer. I'm not reading the thing right now, but anyway, I got to wrap this up. One thing, right Honda and right Toyota, foilonline.com, sell shop wireless services, as just mentioned. Auto Cannon officially licensed Honda and Accurate Gear, Patreon business supporters, automotive specialty tool out of Owens, Wells, Maryland. Quick Automotive out of Winter Garden, Florida, Pell Construction out of Condonia, Michigan, Beak House Small Home Design out of Ashburg, Virginia, and Traverse City, Michigan. Shaping success with Wes Tankersley out of Boise, Idaho. Catch Wes and myself on One Drink Wednesday. Follow us at One Drink Wednesday on TikTok and Instagram. 7 o'clock every Wednesday, Pacific time, we do our show. Special thanks to Mark Stoneman, Catherine Cox, Eddie Ramos, Richard Graves, Byron Jones, Bo Jong, Oscar Mina, Drew Bunkley, and Yasu Chiba. If you're interested in picking up hard parking gear, go to hardparkingpod.com. If you want to join the Patreon, you should for as little as $3 a month. Get access to bonus audio roll as well as show swag. Follow me on Instagram at jfinning. Join the Hard Parking Violations Facebook group. We have a lot of fun in there. Join the Hard Parking channel. I give away free stuff once in a while on Instagram. And if you haven't done so already, leave a review, please. I need a review. Whatever platform you're listening to, leave a review. I can't grow that you tell the world how great this show is. Let's do this. Let's grow this thing together. And I will talk to you all next time. Shut up!